Hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing well and I hope their summer garden is thriving. Um I recently did a Zoom presentation and it's a one-on-one -on, -one on raised bed gardening and I decided I wanted to post it on YouTube so everyone can see who didn't attend the Zoom meeting. So I hope you guys enjoy. Hi Ram everybody. Today I'm going to be talking about raised bed gardening and I hope everyone is doing well during this quarantine time so let's get started raised bed gardening it's uh my name is sankal pimari Sethi. i am 11 years old i live in roseville california in the united states and it's zone b i had the passion of gardening since i was a toddler and i've always liked it garden and i also have a gardening youtube youtube channel called green thumb gardening so let's get started with the contents so what are raised beds? What are the benefits of having a raised bed? How to build raised beds? And how to plant in raised beds? So I'm just gonna start with what a raised bed is. So in the simplest form that could just come off uh, the top of my head, a raised bed is a container with no top or a bottom filled with any dirt to grow plants in it. So you can just stick a plant in it and that's a raised bed in the simplest form. And the best thing about them is they're customizable in size, cost, and material. And it's, and most of the time, it's made out of wood, con brick, or concrete. The typical height of a raised bed is six inches to three feet. You don't want it to be any higher than three feet because it'll be hard to reach. And you don't want it to be any lower than six inches or else you will have very little compost or organic matter, what's gonna really ruin the point of having one. The width of a raised bed is from one feet for the places where there are like, um, uh, when you're right next to the fence and there's concrete and up to six feet, if you have long hands and you can reach and you really don't wanna step inside the raised bed. So um, the length is always optional because, uh, because you can just put posts and uh, make it however long you want. And it's really according to your property size on how big it has to be. Okay, now next, I'm gonna talk about the benefits of having a raised bed. So first of all, I think they just look so much better than normal gardens. In like in a normal garden, there are lots of uh, plants just sticking out of the soil and they just feel so much more organized and look so much better in my opinion. And you can plant much more in lesser space because the soil inside the raised bed is much more fertile. And um, because of the fertile soil, you can start earlier in the year and let your garden stay longer later in the fall because one, it's ele elevated above the soil and there's more heat coming from the soil. And two, the wood is gonna act like an insulator to the soil inside, so you can have a longer growing season. And it's very, very encouraging for beginners. And it, because it's so easy to maintain and have much higher yields. So if you're a beginner, it's a really good start. So you can uh, really get into gardening uh, sooner or later. And continuing on with the benefits, um, they're easier on your back. As you can see, these are metal raised beds that Self-Sufficient Me uses in Australia, Mark from Self-Sufficient Me, and he uses that so it doesn't uh, cramp his back because he doesn't want to reach too low, and there's much lesser weeds to manage. It's, again, because you mulch, lots of times when you mulch the raised bed and you plant so close, the, all of the leaves, they're going to shade out the weeds and not going to let the weeds compete with them. Um, there's again better drainage drainage for clay soil because the soil is above or the compost organic matter is about the soil and same for sandy soil and it's about the sandy soil. Continuing on, you know how to till the soil and every time you till the soil, believe it or not, you're killing all of these different beneficial bacteria, mycorrhiza, all of, fungi, all of these different types of bacteria that are all good and they're gonna help the soil. And the, and just this much soil has billions and billions of bacteria and you don't wanna kill all of that or else you won't have a proper garden. And they're much easier to maintain, as I said before. And 
there's much more rooting and overall plant growth because due to faster rooting, that's going to be there because uh, the roots are going to be able to go to the compost and there's going to be overall the more plant growth because faster rooting, better fertile soil, faster plant growth. Normally, the root size is always associated with the plant size. And due to all of these, they're much higher yields and um, because of the faster rooting, the easier to maintain, you know how to till the soil, in all of these, there's much higher yields. And there's also another plus, if you're not grow growing organically, what I do not advise, then there is much lesser erosion and runoff of fertilizers and um, water. So I'm going to talk about building the raised bed. Building the raised bed is very easy. Um, you can use different types of that's the type of I use wood to build my raised bed. Uh, then I'm going to talk about the plan or design of your raised bed. That's a really key component that you have to do before you build your raised bed. And then I'm going to talk about the build or the type of raised bed you're going to be using and how to build it. And please know you can buy ready-made kits or you can get a uh, hire a gardener or a landscaper to build them for you. And then I'm just going to talk about setting them up and a few tips on how to make sure they're really nice and how to use them properly. Now next, I'm going to be talking about uh, different things you can add to a raised bed. Like there are different types of things other than raised bed gardening, such as permaculture, culture, no dig slash no till. As I said, you don't have to till the soil. What well, helps the soil much be much better? There's back to Eden, where you use wood chips. You have core gardening, where you can dig a core in the middle of your raised bed and add compost, not compost, any organic matter that's not decomposed yet, so it can hold on to water during the hot summer months, so you can pay less, much less on that water bill of yours. And there's so much more that you can research on your own time. And um, you, uh, uh, I'm not going to be able to cover any of these today. And yeah, so I'm going to be moving on. Now I'm going to talk about the materials to build with. They're most commonly, most people build with wood. Wood is the most common and the most cheapest, but it's the one that lives for the least longest because the longevity of wood is much lesser than concrete, uh, metal, and brick. They can only last up to 20 years, like redwood is a pretty, uh, pretty high-end wood, and that only lasts uh, 15 and max, if I might, 20 years. But these other choices can last up to a lifetime, but they can be much more expensive than the wood. Now, I'm going to go on with the different types of wood. Um, there's higher end and more expense. There are redwood, black locust, and cedar. Um, they all last up to 15 years. And if I'm right, cedar is the most expensive and most common. But in our local hardware store, the cedar was um, not available. So I ha we had to go with redwood and Douglas fir. So those are the only two types of wood over there. And Douglas fir and pine are the things that wood that they use to build houses, and they only last five to seven years in a raised bed. So Douglas fir and pine are a really good choice for building in a rental home. And treated wood is a totally different topic, and lots of gardeners, including including me, are really scared to use it because um, it, it's not, we think that it leaches chemicals from the treated wood when you treat it the chemicals leach from the treated wood and then it goes into your soil. And when it goes into your soil, it goes into your plants and you eat the plants. So uh, we don't like to use treated wood, but you can use that and that is the cheapest option. Now I'm gonna be talking about the planner design of the raised bed. Um, this is an overall plan of our raised bed. Um, uh, we, Actually, my father printed out these sheets and he gave it to us. So they were plain sheets. It only had the house, uh, just this patio and this house. And it didn't have none of this and everything over here. And we just pa he just passed it out to my mom, me, and my dad. We all just 
do, did really cool sketches on how we wanted the garden plant to be. So the whole family can be involved in these types of garden plants, and they're really cool. And as you can see over here, um, each one of these squares is one square foot for easy calculations. And this is the borderline of our property or the fence line. And first, uh, since I wanted a lawn, so we decided to go with this. But then we thought about, we got a better idea what was something like this. And this is the current thing that we have right now where we have raised beds. And we actually don't have raised beds or a greenhouse here. We just have a pumpkin growing here. And we realized there's enough space between here to here because we had an AC. Um, and we also had reserved this, these two spaces for future raised beds. Um, this was the lawn uh, that we planted. And we also had a prep, this prepped and it was dug up. So we can put a gazebo or a pond or something that something else that what, what we might want in the future and over his trees and this whole project can be involved with the whole family and everybody can just spend a little bit of time uh, drawing some sketches and just chipping in just to help and have some fun and i want to go in a little bit in detail of the raised beds as you can see this is my c raised bed and i'm going to give you guys a few seconds to look at it and here's the time, uh, here's a table, so you can just take a look at everything. So, I'm gonna start from this side to here. Um, over here we have amaranth and two different types of amaranth. We have totokura for you guys who know it, and we have gongura. And over here we have beans, we have bush beans. Over here we have eggplants. And over here we have tomatoes. Over here, as you saw from the chart, the spacing is not identified because I plant so close. So over here I have corn, but we plant them really close because they are a grass after all. Over here I have wines that are on a trellis that's to the wall over here. If you guys saw in the uh, in the photos before, and over here I have a few bushes, like I have a few marigold bushes that help repel all of the pests, and they help repel pests, and they also smell really good for us. So it's a win-win situation, and that's called companion planting over there. Over here I have uh, okra, lady's finger, for you guys who do not know what okra is. And we also have more tomatoes over here, uh, just identically the other side over here. We used to have potatoes here, and as you can see, the, these are rows. So a few things are grown in rows, but in my opinion, I think uh, squares is better than rows because uh, the only reason rows were accepted in gardening like this was because uh, Modern fam farming uses rows only because it's easier for tractors to go through and harvest and add fertilizer and till. But we're not modern fa farmers, at least I'm not. And we don't really need, because you can just go in and pluck whatever you want. We don't have tractors going over our raised beds. I mean, at least I don't. And really need rows. But a few things have exceptions like potatoes and these just for convenience. Over here, I have um, uh, peppers. I have different chilies. I have bell peppers. I have all different types of peppers. Over here, I have more totokura that I planted recently and they're starting to grow. And again, same thing, they are they are not uh, spaced in rows and over here I have a few squash going on and over here I also have a, a small little herb garden and if you guys want to just take a look for like uh, a few more seconds so you can just get a huge a nice good look uh, now I'm going to move on to building the raised bed 
So first you want to measure the different types of wood and you want the exact sizes and the corner posts and you want everything to be the right size. One of the biggest things that threw us off and you guys shouldn't do is uh, remember that is this is a, this is called a two by eight because it's two inches wide. Well, it's sold as two inches wide and eight inches tall. But in reality, this uh, all most commercial wood is sold half inch short. So we had, uh, so it's actually one and a half inches by seven and a half inches. So that really threw off me and my dad with all of our exact calculations because uh, that day at Home Depot, we had to do the exact calculations again and it was not really too exciting to do exact calculations of everything by hand on in Home Depot on a piece of paper. Um, and like, if for example, we measured that because we're gonna do a five by four raised bed in the middle, and I'm gonna be talking about the five by four middle raised bed that I showed earlier over here in the sketch. I'm gonna be showing how to build this because it's the least complicated, and these all have steps and are a little bit more complicated. So this, suppose if this is four feet, what it was, and this is five feet, what we wanted to do is make the five feet four inches short because these two inches on both of the sides would help, would make it exact. And give me a second. Is there a way to make sure annotation doesn't happen? Okay, anyways, so that really threw us off. So yeah. And then you want to find a flat space to lay your wood and screw in everything. You want the corner post so you can have a stronger bond when you screw in the nails through from. So when you screw in the nails, you want to screw in two nails in that way. And you want to, because you can't screw in more over there, either if you don't want to use corner posts, you can use nails or screws and you can put them cross but that doesn't really work out too well. And so that's why you wanna get a, a corner post and screw in two nails that way and that way, or, or screws, uh, just to make sure the raised bed is much stronger and won't break down uh, in much lesser time. And you always wanna have a flat, or flat space so your raised bed isn't crooked. And especially if you have a patio like this, what, you don't want to be putting it on both of the sides. You want to make sure you do it only in one piece so it can be 100% flat and 0% crooked. And again, you want to level the ground where you're putting the raised bed at. And as you can see, I'm drilling screws over here. And uh, uh, this is not a photo of me leveling the ground, but when you do level the ground, you want to make a, it. If you have a really big slope, you don't really need to level the ground 100%. But if you have a small slope that goes up and down, you really want to level the ground a little so it can just look a little better. And one optional thing is adding carpenter's fa fabric at the bottom. So uh, it can get rid of bowls and it can get rid of bowls and rats and different and gophers and different and wolves on all of those different types of underground animals that might want to get those potatoes that you've been growing for the past two months. And uh, congratulations, you have now successfully finished building your first raised bed. So this is just a timeline of everything and the way our garden looked with nothing, with just, um, we just used to have mulch over here. and. To, uh, and really, when we first did our whole planning, as you can see over here, this whole place it used to be barren land. It, our, our garden actually used to be a pg and &E dump site where pg and &E used to put all of their tar and stuff in the, in, over here. So we didn't really realize that until we started building. Um, so that was kind of unfortunate. So this is just a timeline. And... This all be all barren. It just used to be dirt, I guess, and land, and the whole place had nothing. And then we put the grass and all of the mulch and everything. So over here, I am building this 
raised bed and we just out, we just built it and then I'm starting to level the soil. This is where we understood that you had to level the soil before adding the raised bed and not after you put the raised bed because if you level the soil after you put the raised bed, you had to put like rocks and you had to level and you had to put your head underneath and level slowly. So you just mark everything with a pencil or a post and just level over there and take a level, wait, a level or your phone in norm of your phone normally has a level on it and make sure everything is 100% zero check both sides and all corners to make sure you have a 100% level and 0% crooked raised bed and this is where i am fixing the raised bed and over here is a few days later when we removed all the mulch and we're starting to build the sea that's my little brother and this is a picture from our upstairs bedroom a few weeks later, um, this was a really cool project for us to do during this quarantine time. So, yeah. Give me a second. Can the person who's annotating please stop? Thank you. And over here, over here is a few ve more weeks later again, where we finished building the raised bed. I'm just adding a little bit of carpenter's sheet or landscaping sheet if I'm right, uh, at the edges. This is an, another optional step to make sure there isn't no leakage coming between the cracks. And then uh, this is, uh, even I think a few days later, where we filled up all of the raised beds, raised bed mix, and it's all full and everything is sealed up. So we can, uh, we can add soil and we can start building and wait, I mean, add plants. And this is, I think one day later where I planted all of the plants and I planted the potatoes and everything as you guys saw in the uh, uh, plan. And over here is I think a few weeks later, you can see the progression from just that, uh, from a bare land just, uh, uh, just a few months later with nice lush greens. And then this is a picture, I think one, two months ago. And this is the picture that it took three days ago of my current raised beds and they've been producing bountifully and this is our current picture and how our raised beds look. So now I'm going to talk about how to use and plant inside raised beds. And uh, when you fill the raised bed, you want to use compost. Compost, in my opinion, is the best choice because it's decomposed organic matter. Literally, what's, in my opinion, the best thing to use. And uh, uh, any decomposed organic matter should do, like manures and uh, decomposed manures are better. Um, raised med mix is also a good choice. Uh, that's what we use, but raised bed mix is mostly uh, ex more expensive than compost. But we didn't have organic compost, but we did have uh, organic raised bed mix to buy online. So we had to get the raised bed mix what was organic. And we also added a little bit of native soil that was already in the soil. Uh, so, because clay soil, we have clay soil, and that's why it was really hard for us to dig and level the soil up. And uh, we added more of that because clay soil has lots of minerals in it, and that's what sandy soil lacks. And so we, because we had so many raised beds, we needed three cubic yards of raised bed uh, mix. <laughs> what is just compost and a little bit of peat and a little bit of manure just mixed up and sold. Um, and we got it in a bulk order uh, from a truck and we got three cubes. And it's much cheaper to get a bulk order. And I'm gonna give you guys a few tips on how to plant. So if you add a little bit of organic fertilizer, it helps the plant grow faster. And that's always optional. And what I do is I dig a small hole with my trowel, add a little bit of organic fertilizer and a little bit of wormy compost, what I'll talk, talk about if you have more time. And I water a lot after planting um, because uh, this is a nice example I like to give where when we go from India, if you go from India to America, you have jet lag because you're used to staying in India and you got to sleep to get rid of the jet lag. But 
if you take a plant from one place and put it in another place, it will also have jet lag, right? So you add the water, and the water is like the sleep for the plant. What will help the plant adjust to the new area? When you're planting tomatoes, you always want to dig a hole larger than the stem, uh, larger than this pot and the stem, so you can bury the stem. I like to bury two thirds of the stem and remove all of the leaves, so you can have more root growth. And you don't want to space too far or too close. And lots of a huge mistake in raised beds is uh, spacing way too far and spacing uh, two feet. Like for tomatoes, they say to space two feet, but that's in an in-ground garden. If you're growing in a raised bed garden where you have much a better soil, you can close a uh, space much closer, as I said before. And I'm gonna go on with a few more tips. And this is companion planting, as I said. So they repel pests, like marigolds repel pests uh, from the gourds. That's why I planted the marigolds next to the uh, gourds. And this is a really nice chart to look at and I'll post this link in the chat and later. And uh, one of the big, uh, best, um, the, One of the best companion planting is beans, squash, and corn, where you plant the corn a little bit earlier, and then you plant, well, at the same time you plant squash, where the squash goes on the ground and it trails the ground, so it takes up the ground space, and then the corn takes up the, like, the space above ground, and the beans, they climb the corn as the corn grows, so it's kind of like the corn is the living trellis, and the squash sprawls the ground so it takes up all of the space and the beans take nitrogen from the air and they have nodes in the soil so and lots of families in the bean family like peas and stuff they all do the same thing and corn needs lots of nitrogen to grow so it's just a win-win situation that's what and they have a symbiotic relationship tomatoes plus basil is another good idea where you the basil repels pests and some people do say that basil also makes the tomatoes taste better. And here's another link for more that, again, I'll post in the chat later. And uh, again, pole beans next to corn. Um, I really want to do that, but I don't have pole bean seeds. And I'm just going to uh, give you guys how to plant exactly in a raised bed. you got to dig a hole slightly larger than the transplant's pot. And uh, you want to dig it slightly larger if you want to add a a little bit of uh, fertilizer or soil amendment, like like um, uh, worm castings. And, uh, and you wanna add any soil amendment again into the hole if you want. That's again optional. You can plant the transplant in the hole and bury the stem if needed, uh, like the, as I said for the tomato. And for seeds, it's a little bit different where you sprinkle the fertilizer over, same with the soil amendment, and you rake it in. This is just disturbing the top layer. And you always want to overplant the seed and then thin them out later in case if not all of them sprout. And this is my raised bed garden produce. Um, we normally get lots more than this, but we harvest like one cucumber at a time when we want to use it and one tomato when we want it. So uh, these are some of our biggest harvests. We have a potato harvest here. Uh, we have a bell pepper and chili harvest from our chili raised bed. And we have a really huge eggplant harvest that only came from a raised bed that was four by four, actually smaller than that. And we also have a few more okra. And I'm really thankful for everyone who, who had the time for listening to my presentation uh, during this quarantine time. And um, please check out my YouTube channel called Green Thumb Gardening, and I'll post the um, post the link in the chat. Um, Jay Sairam, and now let's move into the Q&A. Sairam, Shankar Sairam, this is amazing. This is really amazing. Um, you are an awesome gardener, and you're an amazing presenter as well. So thank you, thank you um, so much. You know, I had 11 years to have this 
so much knowledge and also have the right thought process to be able to communicate all of this um, to this audience is really wonderful. Um, and thanks to your parents for inculcating this um, passion for gardening in you early on. And we pray Swami continues to bless and shower his grace on you as you grow and continue to love um, nature. Thank you so much, Kana. And uh, this has been a very informative and inspiring session on raised garden beds. So we'll go into the Q&A session. And if you have any questions, please start typing them in the chat box. And uh, we will take those questions and have Sankalp answer those um, as the questions are coming in. Um, I'm just going to be posting the link for my uh, YouTube channel right now. And I'm also going to be posting the link for the companion planting chart. Thank you. Give me a second. So um, Sankal, while we are waiting for questions, let me ask you this. What do you think was your biggest challenge in getting this going, right? You know, I'm sure this is a lot of work, right? Getting the raised bed and I saw your little fingers at work and <laughs> putting these beds together and doing all of these. Um, what has been your biggest challenge? So uh, while building the raised bed, I'd say that our biggest challenge was um, uh, to, um, leveling the soil because we have clay soil and um, as you can see uh, on this side of uh, right there you can see half of the raised bed is uh, below soil because you had to level it so that was the hardest part for us just leveling the soil and that might be easier for people with sandier soil mm -hmm. makes sense all right so we have a few questions come through um sankal so how do you know what plants to grow in a which season? Uh, there are different plants that grow in different seasons. Um, there are normally uh, summer season crops, winter season crops, and uh, fall and spring season crops. Fall and spring season crops normally fall in this, into the same category. And behind seed packets and plants they normally say when to grow them um i don't think i can go over each and every one of the crops on where you can grow but uh, uh but i'll tell you guys um you can search it up in your own time on uh what plant you can grow on at what time good okay and what fascinated you into gardening um, when I was a child, m my father and my mom, we did guard they did gardening a lot and I was just three year old three years old back then. And I just fell into the steps like them and once uh, we went in uh, over here apparently, I don't re remember, but I just searched up once why is my strawberry growing these small uh, uh, stems? that are growing to the other side. And then I got fascinated about researching on gardening and I just did more research and I just fell in love with gardening. Nice, very nice. How do you take care of pests, um, Sankal? Um, I really don't get too many pests, but when I do get pests, like I had ants crawling all over my um, okra, I put neem oil spray. I spray neem oil and that's control. Okay, you broke up on the last half, but I think it's my audio. You said uh, to spray oh, was... oil and that would take care of it. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, what and are... when you're spraying neem, uh -huh. Go when, ahead. You're... when you're spraying neem oil, you got to make sure you do it in the evening when the bees are not there because it could kill bees in some situations. Got it. Thanks. Thanks for um, that added tip. Um, what would um, do you suggest for the raised bed construction? What would? I would suggest if you want longer lasting, go with cedar, black locust, or redwood. And um, there are much, much more other woods out there that you can get in your own local area. Um, but if you want a rental wood, you uh, like if you're in a rental home and you want a wood, a wood that's much cheaper, you can go with pine or Douglas fir. 
and that will take uh, that will be much cheaper. So I'm using redwood in my raised bed garden, but you can use whatever wood you want. Okay. Okay. If you could pick one crop to plant at this time, remember we are in early August, right? So if you could just pick one uh, crop to plant, what would it be? I would plant a crop that would take very little time to grow. So I see something like maybe a zucchini where you can plant that with seed and they take about 50 days to grow. Like they sell the uh, fast type of zucchini. So I just planted a few zucchinis to take over my squash. As you can see, my zucchinis are starting to die. My squash are starting to die. So to replace those, I'm just adding a few uh, zucchinis. And this is kind of a queasy time to plant seeds because it's uh, close to um, winter, but it's not close enough to plant winter crops. So I would, I would uh, plant zucchinis if I had time. Okay. Um, can you replant in the raised bed every season? Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, you can. Raised bed is a one-year thing. Once you, so if it's an annual garden, and if you don't have any perennial plants, and per, uh, perennial plants, uh, annual plants are like corn, uh, eggplants, peppers, peppers, and uh, just please note that you can overwinter peppers and eggplants if you if they have the right conditions. They can come up the next year, and uh. You can, they can be used every year. You just need to add a little bit more fertilizer if you want. Same like an in-ground garden, you can just use the same ground every year. Okay. Um, so there's another question. So you do have those uh, on your corners of your raised bed, right? There are yeah. poles that are, um, wood poles that are sticking up, right? Is there a yeah. specific reason that you have those, um, those corner poles? Good observation, but uh, we don't really have a specific reason. We started up with, so first when we started, we realized that we wanted to put those corner posts so we can put a fence around it or a netting over it in uh, case if we had any pest problems. Mm -hmm. But but then we realized, and we also, my brother also, he, in the start when we had tomatoes, he just plucks off all of the green ones. As soon as the fence, tiny tomato comes he just pulls it off <laughs> so we want to do that but we were but then we realized that they didn't really look too good and we were a little too late so we just have a few of those corner poles sticking out that we were able to cut okay um can you tell us a little bit more about composting are you into composting as well i presume because you did talk about adding compost to the raised bed and everything right so i yeah so I actually do wormy composting. Okay. I also do normal composting. I have a composting bin uh, at the back, uh, at the back of our house. And I mainly do wormy composting. I've been doing wormy composting for three years, more than doing the raised beds. And uh, I got the worms. So I'm just going to share my screen. So I've been doing wormy composting for three years and we get the worms from Uncle Jim's Worm Farm. It's an online thing. On Amazon, you can buy 500 red wigglers. It's, a, it's the mo most common type of composting worm for like, I think $15. And you just have to put that in a bedding of soil. And in the bedding of soil, you have um, most compost leaves maybe a little bit of shredded newspaper and you got to leave that for around one week and since from then you had to keep adding food scraps once in a week according to your population of worms and you've got to keep doing it and once you're ready to harvest all of them a whole harvest the worm castings they should be all uh, small small bits of compost uh, and the reason one more huge reason that you want to use uh, Worm castings in your garden is because you have lots of good bacteria, and when the food scraps go through a worm's gut, there are lots of good bacteria in there. And uh, as you can see over here, I use a sieve to get the nice fine worm castings. I also have a normal raised bed, a, no a normal composting bin at the back, but we don't. We I just started that a few months ago, and uh, it's starting to come. Post. And for that, you need to have, it's a little bit different where it uses heat to compost. 
and or it uses fungi or fungi and uh, that's a totally different topic where you had to have the right amount of greens and browns to make sure your compost is nice and rich and is not anaerobic what means does it use oxygen and stinks nice very nice all right so I think um, we have all the questions answered um, I think um, this is pretty much it. Yeah, I'm just looking at the chat window. I think we got all the questions answered. So um, we'll start to close the session. Um, once again, um, Sankalp, thank you so much. And uh, thanks to Swami for this opportunity to have you with us. And uh, this is a great way to wind our summer SSC program. Um, you are very inspiring and I hope that we'll have a lot more of our SSE students come forward and share their special talents um, with us. So keep your passion up and keep it going. And um, Jay Saira. We will begin yeah. a devotional session at 4 p.m. Um, so there is another Zoom link for that. So I request everyone to join us at 4 p.m. Um, on our devotional program. Thank you. Jay Saira. And please check out my YouTube channel. I'm posting the link in over here again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching my video. Please cultivate that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already.